Bonjour, everyone. Hi, this is Nisha Lokatz. Welcome to Star Nation's organization's main fan page where I do this daily live stream. And I know I'm just running just a tad bit late today. Not too bad. It's only, it's not like Indian time or something like that. It's only three minutes late. Um, so welcome. Today is Monday, January 21st. And uh, it's in the afternoon here in in uh, Tumma, Wisconsin, where I live. It's about an hour east of the Mississippi, and it's cold. It's really, really cold. <laughs> when I got up this morning, it was, I think, um, 11 below, 11 below zero. So, and as I was being, my mother was reminding me, this is January and this is Wisconsin. <laughs> and this is this is typical weather for us, actually, for, for January. So let's see who's in the chat. In the chat, let's see, here we go. Hey, Rob Kendall's here. Hola, hola, como estas, Rob? Como estas? And Rochelle's here too. <laughs> Where are you? I was, I was just a tad bit late. I'll tell you all about it in just a second, Rochelle, okay? <laughs> and Rob says, George, are the network's cable? <laughs> well, it had something to do with him. Yes, it did. <laughs> Stephanie said, I think there may be some technical difficulties. Not really, unless you call it George. Um, <laughs> yes, and Julie, actually, we're going to hold that just for a second. Hello, Julie Hill Shumway. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and Christine, one of my sisters is in the house. Good to have you here, Christine, always. And we're going to scroll up a little bit here. Hey, and Lynn Marie's here too. Hello, Lynn Marie. It's good to have you here on this Blue Monday. Blue Monday. I like the blue heart. And Donnie's with us. Donnie Fulton's good to have you back, Donnie. Good to see you in the chat. And Rob's saying, it's so cold, I saw a brass monkey warming himself on my car radiator. <laughs> Let's see. A car radiator. I suppose we still have those, right? Yeah. <laughs> See, I have a hybrid. I, I run mostly on, on electric. In fact, Paul was just telling me, I think it was yesterday or the day before, that there was a prompt that came up on the um, on the screen in the car mm -hmm. saying that it was switching over to, to the motor because uh, it hadn't been used in so many hours. And it was like days, days. So that's kind of strange. Never had something like that happen before. Um, Okay, so before we get rolling, I'm going to share and like um, the broadcast. And so I've got to find my, my Facebook. Here we go. And I'm going to scroll a little bit here. There we are. So I'm liking and I'm sharing. And I'm sharing it, you know, as usual, over to my news feed. I have to double check to make sure that it's marked on public. Here we go. And I'm just going to say, hey, friends. And let them know that I'm live streaming. And, of course, asking them to please join. There we go. Yeah, you know, I do it so often. I have the quick keys, right? So it makes it so much easier. Now, this is really, really off topic, but, you know, on Facebook, did you ever see the purple kind of icon -y thing that says, watch this video with your friends? Has anybody done that yet on any, any videos? I've been meaning to, but I just, I forget. Um, I was just wondering what your, your experience is with it, if it was good or indifferent or, you know, you just tried it just to find out what it was like. Yeah. And Rochelle said, drove today for PT, physical therapy. It was a lot easier than what I expected. Yay. Well, good for you, Rochelle. That's a big step, a big step. Um, you know, getting your in independence back, right? So you can go places that you want to go to and not have to wait for somebody. Um, although, you know, very kind people have been helping you too, I know. Um and also, you know, it's a it's a morale booster and self-confidence booster that you could do it, that you have the range of motion to be able to drive. And that's that's great. I'm happy for you. Happy, happy. 
All right, and I believe this is this is Stephanie. She says, I have yet to figure out how to host a party with the video. Only seems to work with finished videos. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't even tried it yet. Um, Rochelle said, I watch videos with my cat. <laughs> oh, well, good. Um, but I think that when you press that, that icon or when you hit the start, um, that it kind of goes... Um, to your friends and so that people can click on it to, and watch it with you. I think that's how it works. But like I said, I haven't I haven't done it myself, so I'm not sure. And Lynn is saying, Blue Monday, it's a time when we're a bit depressed because of missed New Year's goals and 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 no sun. Always the third Monday in January. Huh. Okay. I never heard of it before. That I've learned something new. Is there is there a um, is there is, is there an opposite one, Lynn? Like um, I don't know, what would they call it? Happy Tuesday or Happy Monday? I don't know. You know, if they have one, you'd think that they would have the other, right? Hey, good afternoon, Andrea. It's good to have you here. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. I, I figured it was you. It's um, because I haven't seen Julie on yet. So, and Lynn said, I've done watching with others on Facebook. Oh, so it goes to more than just your friends. It goes to the public. Hmm. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. I'm going to have to make time and um, actually try it. Give it a whirl. Give it a whirl. And Anne just popped in. Hey, Anne, good to see you here. Good to have you here. Your nephew. Your furry nephew named George is the reason why I was a wee bit late. <laughs> Just a wee bit. Um, <laughs> the okay, so here here's the deal: is that I have a, a special guest company. Now she's not going to come on. I don't think so. She's not paying attention to me. All right, so, so you know that we are, um, I've added on to the executive team. We have Stephanie, who is our social media manager and is doing a really good job. Our numbers are getting really, really high. Um, and we just recently added on Star Nations Academy manager, and that is Julie Shumway Hill. And, um, and so she's going to be helping me uh, with the academy and the classes and, you know, the registration, all that good stuff. And Julie is actually from Wisconsin. She lives about an hour from me. And um, so she drove up this this afternoon. I was going to say this morning. You kind of probably left around noon, huh? Around noon. Around noon. Um, and this is the first time she's been here. Um, and so it's her first time in, at the academy and at my home. But Julie and I have known each other since first grade. Yep. First grade. Yeah. We didn't go to kindergarten together. She was in the morning. No, I was in the morning. She was in the afternoon. <laughs> so uh, we, we went to the same school district and we've known each other for a lot, a lot of years. Um, and it's so nice to be able to reconnect, you know, with with uh, people who knew you when, right? It's good stuff. And so Julie's here, which means that my furry boy, George, is very, very excited and, and ramped up. <laughs> Trying to get him to calm down didn't work. And so um, he, he was rather rambunctious. Actually almost ended up in Julie's lap. <laughs> and I thought, okay, enough, enough. We need, we need to put George in the car. And so he, right now he's in the car. Hopefully he'll be sleeping. So the technical difficulty um, was a, a, a six-month-old puppy <laughs> who, who really likes Julie a lot. <laughs> and it's a good, only good that jo Julie is a dog person. She has four. And so she knows that puppiness and, uh, and was, it was a good, a good egg about all of it, especially when he almost ended up in your, in your lap. <laughs> I usually have two in my lap. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that. She says she usually has two of them in her lap. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right. Um, Rob is saying, are you speaking harshly of a sweet, adorable, and innocent puppy for shame? 
Okay, I heard a dog barking, but it's not, it's our, our neighbor dog. Um, I'm hoping that George is, is well on their sleep. And Alice Morrison is saying, hi, Julie Shumway Hill. All right, and Anne is saying, welcome to Julie. Yep, thank you, Stephanie. I'm gonna show the, the front of the book. This is what uh, Stephanie's talking about, is the, the deck that we're currently using is called Angels and Ancestors by Kyle Gray, and the artist is Lily Moses. We've been using this deck since September, end of September. Yeah, I like it a lot. But you know what? We are going to be switching it out, um, kind of uh, freshening things up a bit. Um, I have a deck that um, was gifted to me by Mervyn Kelly, and it's uh, Druid Animals. I think that's the name of it. Um, I have it out. I've actually had the cards out a couple of different times and got interrupted. Um, and so I haven't actually sat down with them and started working with them yet. Um, so maybe within the next uh, couple weeks or so, we should be starting a new deck. And Stephanie, I will let you know uh, the name of the deck and all of that good stuff before we do. All right, so how about if we get to the cards? It's a very interesting combination today, two cards. Now, this first one we've gotten several times since we began doing the, the, the card draws with this particular deck, and it's called Peacekeeper. Peacekeeper. And it says, let go of the need to be right. Let go of the need to be right. Peacekeeper. Hmm. You know, and chances are, you know, whenever, whenever we've been in a verbal confrontation or maybe it's a, a very lively discussion, <laughs> I'll call it that, um, a lot of times, you know, it's our ego that gets involved in that we have to, we feel like we have to prove ourselves right to, to vindicate ourselves, right? That's a good word, vindicate, um, to prove that we're right. And sometimes we get really tenacious about it, kind of stubborn. And we try to prove it past the point that you know, we kind of lose, we even lose focus of what the conversation was even about and what was the real problem. Um, because, you know, we're, we're so focused, almost like um, got blinders on you. That's the only thing you can see, right? Yeah. And when we get like that, because we're human, we're two-legged, um, that we, um, yeah, we really, really try to convince the other person person or people that that the, our our opinion is the the right opinion right and and sometimes we say things that hurt that actually hurt the other person without sometimes without knowing it and sometimes we do it consciously right yeah that's not being a peacekeeper <laughs> you know sometimes i know it's hard to hear sometimes other people's opinions um, and listen to it um, and be calm about it and take it in. Um, but a peacekeeper, and we we had this in, in our previous deck, um, the pathway cards, is, um, is I think it was the talking stick card, is that everyone's opinion or every everyone that has something to say um, has the right to be to be respected to have their say without being interrupted. Doesn't mean that you have to agree with them, but to be able to listen to them and hopefully hear them, which is two different things, right? It's two different things. Um, sometimes, sometimes someone is talking to us and they, we, we're, we are not really giving them our attention. We're hearing them, but we're not really paying attention to them. And so we really don't under, didn't really, I'm going to put it in air quotes, really hear what they said. Unfortunately, I've done that to my husband a few times. 
And I'm sure, you know, if, you, if you've ever been in a relationship, a long-standing one, it's happened more than once. Yeah. And now he just kind of waits for me and looks at me. And when I turn to him and look at him, he goes, okay, now I can, now I can start. <laughs> because I, he actually has to get, especially when I'm working, right? He's got to get my attention. So um, the peacekeeper, the peacekeeper is um, sometimes we have to, we have to just let it go. We don't have to be right. We don't have to be. And, you know, this is, this particular card is one of my favorite ones because it, uh, it is about white buffalo calf woman, um, spirit that brought the seven gifts to the Osheti Sakoi, the great Sioux nation, um, the seven gifts that starts with, that starts with, um, I think it's the vision quest, if I remember right. Starts with a vision quest. And ultimately, ultimately, the seventh gift is Sundance. And it could take you some time to go through all seven gifts. And so those those six gifts are in preparation of the Sundance. And the Sundance is um, about praying for the people. Praying for the people. Not necessarily yourself but praying for the people. And so it's in the preparation, right? And I do know that in part of that preparation, they talk about walking the red road. And the red road is all about peace and harmony. You know, you're, you're, you're in service to your community. And in this particular card, she's showing, you can see the pipe that she's holding um, that's called a chinupa. It's not a peace pipe. <laughs> it's kind of Hollywood stuff, peace pipe. Um, it's a chinupa. It's a sacred pipe used for prayers. And if you can tell, let's see if you can tell. I can hold it up enough. Hopefully the camera is going to focus on it. You can see the smoke rising from the bowl of the pipe. And it's rising up to to the white buffalo. Yeah. And with the pipe, when you have the bowl and the stem put together, it's about balance, about male and female energies balanced. Um, the bowl is represents the universe, all of creation. And so when you put um, the Lakota, what they do, <clears throat> what they use is called kinshasha. It's not tobacco. It's, it's uh, willow bark. And so it's not inhaled. It's not inhaled. You take it into your mouth and you blow it out. Um, so you have this the sacred breath behind it, right, in, in your prayer. But as you're, you're loading the pipe, um, there's special songs that are sung. Um, and a pinch is given to everything that's in creation practically. Um, and so you have the entire universe with you as you're doing the prayer. And so pipe carriers, it's, it's a way of life. Once you pick up the pipe, um, you never really put it down. It's always with you. And there's a spirit that lives within that pipe. So you're working with that spirit. And so in order to walk with the pipe, you have to have a certain lifestyle. You, you, you have to, um, you know, work toward that, be that peacekeeper, be that peacekeeper. And, you know, this might be a good time to even say this is, you know, it, it's gone viral. Everybody's talking about it is um, the indigenous march that occurred in Washington, D.C. this past weekend. You know, everybody has seen, it's going to, yesterday, didn't I say it's going to be an iconic picture of the of a young uh, white man, because he's not a boy. Um, he's a young man standing in front of this uh, Native American elder who's drumming and singing, right? And it's got, got kind of blown out of proportion, Two leggeds—that's what we do. We complicate things, <laughs> but 
the drummer, the singer, he's a pipe carrier. If you were reading or listening to a lot of the interviews or reading about the interviews, it describes him as a Native American veteran. He's a drummer, he's a singer, but he's also a pipe carrier. And when you're a pipe carrier, you know, you're bringing people together and you're praying for other people. And so, and what he, I heard him on an interview saying that what he was trying to do is diffuse the situation between two different groups of people. And so he was kind of right in the middle of them. And so he was being a peacekeeper. And I know that some people felt that he was being disrespected and he probably was. And I think yesterday I had said something about, you know, he's been around a long time. He's a Vietnam veteran. You know, this isn't the first time he's experienced racism. If something was said to him. Now he says that there wasn't, there wasn't anything said directly to him. So I'm going to get caught up in the chat. That's a UN peacekeeper, Rob saying. Mm -hmm. um, Andrea saying, I may lose signal. I'm in the mountains right now. Oh, be careful. Be safe. Be safe if you're in a snowstorm up in the mountains. Oh, my goodness. Trina, Jake. Oh, my gosh, Trina. I don't know if I can pronounce your last name correctly. Apostadero? She's from Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha. And Rob is saying it depends on the battle. Well, yeah, in a way. I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's balance, right? And there's that fine line, I think, is that, rather than adding wood or fuel to the fire and trying to be right in your ego. But there's also this fine line, I think, about being able to, to use your voice and to stand up and, and have the courage to, to speak, right? I think that's two different things. One, one is coming from your mental mind and your ego out of balance, and the other one is is actually speaking from your heart. And most most times, most times people can feel it when you're speaking from your heart. And when you're speaking from your heart, you're not trying to force somebody to change their their opinion or or anything like that, right? At least that's my 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 two cents. My two cents. And so Rochelle's saying hello to Trina. <laughs> letting her know that she's from Michigan and it's cold and Tina is in the house. Hello, Tina. It's always good to see you here. What say you about Nate, the elder drummer? Rochelle said that, and that is such a calming card, isn't it though? I like it. I like it a lot. Um, <laughs> Mervyn Kelly's in the house. I am Kelly. Boo to you too. <laughs> Oh, let's see. Tina says you have to speak truth when carrying a pipe. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Um, yeah, and and then but that's probably why not everyone is a pipe carrier, right? Because there's there's um, a certain lifestyle um, that you walk in order to be a pipe carrier. <laughs> the two guys in <laughs> rabbit saying boohoo. Uh, poor Rob. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let, let's refresh our memory about uh, Peacekeeper from Kyle Gray. It says, let go of the need to be right. Choose peace and happiness over the need to be right. Rather than trying to prove a point, save your energy for what's important. For what's important. You know, and so what's important? You know, when we're talking about this stuff, I'm, you know, I'm thinking what's important is what we have to do for soul growth, right? Using our gifts, having more access to our intuition. And that usually means is that your, your energy is going toward some sort of healing process or, um, you know, maybe you've been through it and now you're in that integration time. And so you're, you're, you're pulling your energy in rather than going out. 
pulling your energy in so that you have that that uh, the focus and uh, okay self-discipline to be able to to really gather the information that's coming from spirit to help you with that integration right and so if you're if you're trying to prove yourself right all your energy is going out all your energy is going out hmm it's something to think about I just said a mouthful there. Rob said that this uh, there is time to stand in truth. I refuse to live under fascism. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I know that that um, this piece that happened with the, the the drummer and this young man, or actually this this group of people. Um, really really touched um people's emotions some people really got triggered by it and you know and i was trying to explain that to paul yesterday evening because we were talking about it and um he was really upset with the media and how they're distorting it right and i said well yeah but why you know it, it, that's a vehicle why why does it make you so angry about it and he said it was because it feels like manipulation that it feels like um, they're not giving us the entire story to, for us to make our own opinion and our own decision about it i said yeah but that's corporate media <laughs> that's why we have to we have to discern you know and pull in information from different sources and so that when we do that discerning that we're we're just not taking the information especially when it has something to do with this from um, a news source that may be compromised. Now that doesn't mean that that what they're saying there's not a kernel of truth in it. It's it's up to us to to sense it, right? So it I think that a lot of the a lot of things that happened um, around that situation, um, it was I believe that spirit was trying to show us something. And rather than than pointing fingers and and um, trying to prove that we're right about it, is to try to understand within ourselves why that emotion was so strong and came up in that way. And look at the timing of it. Come on, guys. We were we were already in the um, energies of that lunar eclipse where we're releasing stuff, right? Um, I don't think that was a coincidence. I don't think that was a coincidence at all. So if we if we can tap into the energy of that lunar eclipse, um, whatever that strong emotion that got triggered over that situation, um, we're being offered a time, the, the opportunity to heal something and to let it go, right? Yeah, well, that's that's what I shared with Paul anyway. <laughs> oh, Tina, here we go. The power of carrying a pipe is you give up a lot and walk in a sacred way. Be kind, being kind, praying where needed need be. It's so much positive energy to put out to people. It's hard to say because there is so much. I know, I know, but I think you, you hit. I think you you really um, hit the nail on the head, Tina is that it is about kindness and it is about um being in service to others with it right and your life really is um and, we're, and they're always tested too they are and you can always see those people who are carrying the pipe in a good way and doing the best they can they are the peacekeepers right they might not even agree with with uh, the, the other person's opinion, but they're gonna choose the path of peace. Yeah. Mervyn's saying the regular media only gives us part of the story. That's true. The corporate part of the story. Oops, that's my two cents. <laughs> Tina's saying, I see an elder who who's seen through spiritual eyes, who sees negativity and through prayer, prayer and song to help. Yes, yes. 
You know, and it, take, it takes a lot of courage, don't you think? No matter who you are, to, to step up and get between two opposing groups to calm things down, you know? Um, it takes a lot of courage to do that. You might say that this that this elder certainly certainly was using his gifts, um, and that spirit was with him in that because it could have been it could have been really kind of ugly. Hmm. Okay, so one of the things that that Kyle says about this card, I'm going to show it again for those people who just show, joined us. The peacekeeper says, "Let go of the need to be right." There is so much more power in choosing to move forward from a higher perspective. It's more important at this time to avoid arguments or heated discussions where you know you'll be fighting a losing battle. This higher perspective will allow you to connect deeply with the guidance within and the intuition that will lead you towards the healing of the whole situation. Along with any wounds that it might that might have been inflicted upon you, choose peace. You know it's calling you. Choose peace. Yeah. Do you ever notice that there's there's very little drama around peace? Do you ever notice that? And the opposite, right? Chaos. <laughs> drama. 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 And. A lot of people trying to trying to prove that they're right on the other side of that, the flip side. But when when you're when you're on when you choose peace, a lot of the drama just naturally falls away. Why? Is because peace is a much higher vibration, a higher frequency. And so like, like energy beats like energy and drama is not going to be where peace is at. It's not. Rob is saying fascism viles the, um, the peacekeeper. Vilifies, sorry. It's, it's called bifocals. <laughs> you got to get it just right. Vilifies the peacekeeper. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Peacekeeper, many times, they don't really care. It, that, that's not, that's not um, a part of their, should we put, say, mission? I don't know if that's the right word. Tina says, when faced with a demon, per se, what do you do? Stand your ground and not show fear. Pray. Yeah. It takes, personally, okay, been been in similar situations, not exactly the same, but similar. Um, and thank you for saying that, Tina. Um, is that in order to do what this elder did, or anything similar to that? Yes, it takes courage, but it also takes somebody who is balanced, somebody who is grounded, to be able to hold that container, that sacred container of that energy. And, and what he did was he continued drumming and singing, okay? So, yes, it takes courage and it takes bravery, but it also takes somebody who is grounded and centered to be able to hold that much, we're going to call it wattage, right? Because there were a lot of people there to be able to hold that container. And that tells me a lot about that elder, Mm -hmm. And so when you're able to do that and you come from a place of love, an abundance of love, you are going in fearless. Now, I heard a bit about his interview that he did, one of them. And I, I think the question was, you know, if he was afraid. And he said that he did have fear, but it wasn't so much a fear for himself as it was that he feared for that young man's, young man's generation, right? And he feared for the other group 
that was that that these two groups are in opposition is because they were so closed to in their hearts and in their minds and you don't you don't get to a place of peace in either position <laughs> when you're closed in your heart in your mind and so that's what he said that his fear was about but it wasn't so much a fear for himself yeah Example, Mushy, I've confronted the dark side. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Years of it. Um, and whenever I see the word fearless, I know that it's about an immense amount of love. And you have to you have to be you have to really trust your spiritual guides, your spiritual team. Yeah. They got me out of really tough scrapes before, both in the physical world and in the non-physical. Um, and so I trust my team a hundred percent. And so, and I trust in prayer, you know, and so there's a lot of faith with it too. Um, and usually when you say the word faith, a lot of people will take that out of, you know, and, and mean it more in a, in a religious kind of framework. But what I'm meaning is more of a spiritual framework. There's not a lot of dogma to it, really. Um, other than other than having done your your own work and your preparation for it, meaning you're grounded, <laughs> you're balanced, and you're going in with help. You're not doing it by yourself. Yes, uh, Tina St. Spirit showed me I experienced it. Yeah, well, there's all kinds of different demons. There's the ones that we demonize, right? Other two-leggeds. And then there's those, those ones that are in the unseen. And my Misho used to say something about um, the, one, the ones to be concerned about are the ones you can see. In other words, the, the two-legged, you know. Um, because they're unpredictable. They're unpredictable. And so um, if you go in prepared, and that's why, that's why um, not everybody can do that kind of work. Because we have to be able to hold that spiritual container with our ego in balance or in check, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it also helps to have a sense of humor on the other side of things. I think that's why I have such, I don't know. I like to think I have a, a sense of humor. I mean, some people might might not might not think so. <laughs> like my brothers, they might, they might disagree. <laughs> hmm. Okay, I gotta check the time, making sure. Okay, so let's move on to the second card, okay? Here we go. It's the hermit, the hermit. It says retreat and recharge, retreat and recharge. And what, you know, we have, we have a male and a female here, right? Female, peacekeeper, male, retreat and recharge. Here's, we got balance here. Because in some ways, the peacekeeper in this in this context might be a, a, a bit more active energy in the peacekeeper because you're actually choosing, you're letting go, you're doing something, you're doing um, an act, right? You're letting go, you're letting go, and you're choosing peace, you're choosing it. Whereas the hermit, is really in a very quiet repose. In the background is the, uh, I think that's the sheer yantra. That's the balance between male and female. And, okay, we're taking a look at his mudras here, his hands. And it looks like, okay, 
for those people who know mudras, it is the, the thumb and index finger. Thumb and index, index finger. I've got to make it go here. And so those mudras, what they do is they close a circuit, an electrical circuit, right? And, you know, he's sitting in the lotus position. And so it's about calmness. It's calming the brain. Yeah. Okay. And so it's interesting. I found it interesting this morning when I was going over the cards. And in and, and this particular one, you know, the male energy is usually um, more active and extroverted. They're usually doing something. It usually has more to do with the mental mind. And here we have the male energy being more yin, more more feminine, and being going within, more quiet. Right? Even if you just take take a look at the colors that are used here. The darker colors are, are um, usually are used with the sacred feminine. And the lighter, brighter colors are usually um, representing the sacred masculine. So the lighter, brighter colors are more yang or male, and the darker colors are more yin or female. So we have a lot of balance going on here. Very interesting. You know, and, and when we're going when we're going inward, and I know that sometimes it's hard to do, right? <laughs> because of um, the society we live in, um, everything happens a lot fast. Um, and sometimes it's hard to slow down enough to be in that quiet place. The Onondaga, which is a nation on the East Coast, they're part of the the Iroquois Nation, the Confederacy. Um, they call it um, going into the silence. Going into the silence. Yeah. They're also the ones that say, put your thin ears on. <laughs> In other words, you're listening to spirit. That's clear, clear audience. Put your thin ears on. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna catch up with with uh, comments here. If I can get it to scroll, that'd be good. All right. Um, all right. So the last one I saw with Tina saying, "Really, really, <laughs> yeah." Um, what is the background of that card, of the male card? Yeah, that's what I'm going to actually read a little bit from Kyle, what he says about the background. And the background um, is actually a cave. And very lightly, you can kind of see the sacred geometry there. That's right behind him. But he's sitting in the cave. And Rob, let's see, Tina saying, um, I, I and Rob was just sitting about, just chatting about this stuff. And towards the end, I said, because things were coming into my space to stop. I don't want any more space. I want peace. Oh. Well, good. You chose peace. That's always a good thing. You know, and to be, to be able to say stop is always good. Yep. So that second card really helped, huh, Tina, to recharge. Oh, Rob is going, no justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. Yep. Yeah, use the second one. You know, uh, it's a more positive saying. Although, Rob, uh, the universe, spirit doesn't, doesn't, um, doesn't react to the negative words. And so in the first one, um, they just, spirit will just hear the peace and justice. They don't sense their no, understand the no. 
Yeah. It's only the humans, the two leggeds that um, that would gravitate toward that no and, and and you know recognize it and and see it. All right, so let's learn a little bit about the hermit. The hermit. Retreat and recharge. The message is take time to rest and recuperate in order to continue your growth. Benefit from the information that will come directly from your heart space. I'm going to say that last sentence again. Benefit from the information that will come directly from your heart space. So when we're quiet, when we go within, we can actually hear our higher self, our soul self. that we can actually feel more whole because we're pulling those pieces of ourselves together, right? Our soul self, our conscious self or our ego self and our inner child or our subconscious self. And most times we, we think of those as separate, right? But when you're in the quiet and you're going within, you've chosen peace, is that you you get to sense yourself in that wholeness and to be able to hear your soul from your heart because that that is where our soul resides is within our own heart <laughs> let's see we're going to do tina first tina first um i looked at the positive of the elder from a higher perspective but the lower realm of people think negative. It bothered me a little. Yeah, you know, and, and Tina, for, in my world, in my world, is that, is to, to try to understand a little bit more in, in a deeper way why it bothered you. What was the emotion around it? Go to the emotion. And, you know, maybe it was triggering something for you to say, to point, you know, this, you need to look at this. You look at this and you can heal another aspect of whatever that is, you know. And so in the higher, wider perspective, we were being given a huge gift, a huge gift to be able to um, to take that in and but to look within and say, OK, so why did that bother me? Why did I feel so emotional about that? no matter what the emotion was. And so it's, it, they gave us a gift. Both of them, both the elder and that young man, they gave us a huge gift. I know some people would probably disagree with me, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, and Julie, Julie sitting right here, right next to me, today's cards make me think about peace outside and in absolutely it's called the hermetic law as above so below as within so without and that also tells us that how we view the outside world is what's what's going on within us so if we we see racism and chaos and hatred and that's what we grab onto and that's what we spend a lot of our time discussing and thinking about and trying to prove some a point <laughs> you know that's being reflected on something that's going on in the inside and sometimes it's harder to own that part of us um, to be able to to take a look at it and heal whatever at whatever is coming to the surface. See, all of that for just one sentence. <laughs> uh, Tina said, I even pulled an oracle for myself because all of this, and it spoke about integrity, which hit right on. Mm -hmm. So the, the feeling of things out of integrity. Yeah. Rob, don't forget justice is what, li what, live, what live looks yeah. like in public. Cornell West. Justice is what I think you meant life looks like in public. Love. No? love? Love. Oh, 
Okay, <laughs> thank you, love. Got to go scroll up a little bit higher to see the edit. Okay, there we go. That's this is what love looks like in public. Hmm. Yeah. If nothing else, it certainly started a really good discussion, didn't it? Because you can take that that and, and go in so many different directions with it. I gotta look at the time here. Okay. Let's see what uh, Kyle says about the hermit. He says that the hermit card is one of the one of solitude and meditation. It rep represents your capacity to go within and arrive at the cave of your heart. Many of the answers to your problems lies within, and if you don't take the time to con connect with yourself and feel comfortable alone, you won't be able to hear the messages that are rising up inside of you. The cross-legged meditation position of the cave-dwelling sadhu on the card is an invitation to harness the power of your meditation practice. The sheer yantra symbol behind him represents the union of masculine and feminine energies. Hence, and you know, all know how I like that word, hence, support from Mother, Father, God. Hmm. He goes on to say that you've been working hard and giving your all to your current situation, and it may be, become draining and detrimental to your development unless you retreat and recharge your energies. And I have to say that because I am a triple Sagittarian, that um, I do need that recharge time. Um, because when I'm when I'm when it's out of balance and I'm on the go 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 go, I burn myself out and literally will be in bed sick because I didn't listen to slow down. Now I've learned over these years <laughs> that when I need to take a rest to recharge, and sometimes you'll see that you'll notice that I'm not real active on Facebook. I might be doing a couple of business stuff, but on the personal side, you might not see me for a couple of days on, on Facebook or social media. Um, it's because I pulled in and I've probably taken a nap. <laughs> um, and so I just need to recharge, right? And so um, I've learned that I have to listen. I have to listen to my body and I have to listen to my guidance. Um, because they'll tell me, and lately it has a lot been doing with about playtime, because they don't take much of time to go play to play. So with this card, it's really telling us about when we're quiet and we're going inward, we can we can find that balance, we can find that balance, and to recharge. Hmm. Okay, so he's saying, so meditate and listen to your soul's wisdom before proceeding further. Um, and so we've been kind of on a theme the last couple of days. We've gotten cards about um, being in that integration time, being quiet, listening, waiting for important information, right? And it's interesting that this all happened around the, the lunar eclipse time. Yeah. So with these two cards today, with these two cards today, and choosing that path of peace, we have a choice. And when we choose that path of peace, we've really reduced the drama that could be in our lives. And we also have the, 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 actually the, I'm going to say responsibility to retreat and recharge, to be good to ourselves, to be in that quiet moment, to go within so that we can connect with our higher self, our soul self. Yeah. 
and experience experience if you haven't done it yet experience what it feels like to be whole to be whole yeah and you know having all aspects of yourself in the, in the same place at the same time pulling yourself together so you know you know that whatever resonates with you today and what was shared whether it was through the cards or through um, comments in the chat, you know, my suggestion is to pick it up and embrace it and see how the energy for today unfolds for you. You know, um, are you a direct participant or are you a witness to it? Because either way, it's good. Either way, it's good. Um, and if it didn't resonate with you, don't worry about it. You can just let it lie. Um, you know, a lot of times they say maybe you're the the um, messenger. Maybe you know somebody who would enjoy this kind of conversation or the information they've been looking for and just share the, the recording with them. And then you're done. <laughs> then you can move on. But if it didn't resonate with you, don't worry about it. Because there's always tomorrow, right? We'll see what happens tomorrow in tomorrow's cards. And... Um, we got shows coming up for you, right? Tonight, tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern is, is um, Julie Hedges. Julie Hedges in the Tarot Journey. And um, she's actually doing card reads tonight. So if you enjoy that kind of thing, um, you can meet up with her at 9 p.m. Eastern at uh, the Tarot Journey fan page. And I think she's also talking about, I kind of like the title of it. It was Evolution... No, revolution, evolution, I think that was. And she's talking about the new year and uh, and uh, taking that energy, right, and using it for good stuff. So um, join her at 9 p.m. Eastern. On Tuesday, Tuesday is at noon, is Polly Jo LeBay and Chakra Sessions. And I forget what she's talking about. <laughs> I think it's the, the, the world tree, the world tree, or the tree of life. The tree, uh, tree of life. Yeah. Um, she, so she's sharing about that with us at noon Eastern on Chakra Sessions, Polly Joe. And then um, then we're going to do the live stream here, the daily live stream at 3 p.m. Eastern. And then my weekly show, uh, Communications from Home, on Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. And um, we're going to be talking, talking a little bit about the medicine wheel and thought and thought. And actually... That idea came from came to me from the live stream the other day. And so we're going to take that piece and kind of expand it and talk a little bit more about that. All right. And on Wednesday is Polly Jo LeBay is back with Soul Connections um, at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. And that is all about healing and, uh, and also card draws. Okay. Uh, Thursday. Thursday's a brand new show. Mm -hmm. Angel Therapy with Maureen Mann, 4 p.m. Eastern. Please join us for that and get to know Maureen a little bit more. She'll, I think she's doing a card draw too, if I remember right. Um, and she's introducing us to the angels from her perspective, from her point of view and her knowledge base. So I hope you can join us. So with that, enjoy the rest of your Monday. And we'll see you back here tomorrow at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Eastern for the daily uh, live stream and card draw. Okay. And uh, Bama Mina, until we see each other again. Love you guys.